Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We begin this time with the U.S. Open Golf Tournament and preparations for the hundreds of thousands of people it's expected to bring to Congressional Country Club in Bethesda. The last time the tournament took place here was in 1997. The tournament is also seen as an economic boon for those communities where it takes place. Last month, county officials launched a marketing campaign designed to explore the county using a discount card. The card is good at many local restaurants and hotels. Councilmember Phil Andrews told us the county has put lots of other resources into making the U.S. Open a successful event. Uh, those folks who were here uh, 14 years ago, I'm sure some of them are coming back for this uh, and make it an annual uh, trek to the U.S. Open and, and uh, many new people will see the event and see other parts of Montgomery County, we hope. Uh, Bethesda, Rockville, Silver Spring, Gaithersburg, you know, go out to eat in these places, stay in the hotels, which I'm sure are uh, well booked at this point, uh, and it will be a real boon to the county uh, at a time when the economy is still slow, so it'll be a, 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 a real good boost for our businesses. And many folks are hoping this oppressive heat will subside before the tournament gets started. Forecasts do show the temperatures to be a little lower, but tournament watchers are reminded to take these precautions to avoid any heat-related illness. Wear light-colored, loose-fitting clothing, eat small amounts, drink plenty of water and avoid alcoholic beverages, use sunscreen, and if you can, find some shade. Construction has begun on a new facility in Germantown that will be housed primarily by Boeing. The county executive was joined by Boeing officials and developers of the building for the official groundbreaking this week. The facility will be used to accommodate Boeing's growing needs in the area of engineering for its subsidiary, Digital Receiver Technology. The facility is expected to be complete by next year and it will accommodate close to 200 new green jobs. Your decision to grow here validates our vision for Montgomery County to become the global location of choice for technology-driven companies. Today, groundbreaking for DRT Born demonstrate how our talented, highly educated workforce, large concentration of major technology firms, access to federal and academic institutions, and public-private sector development initiatives that have combined to enhance our local economic development. Your success is really our success, and we pledge to support your continued growth and expansion right here in Montgomery County. While Montgomery County Public School seniors walked across the stage to receive their diplomas, a national report was released that included the graduation rates of the nation's 50 largest school systems. Once again, MCPS found itself in a very familiar position. Here's the story from Montgomery County Public Schools. Montgomery County Public Schools has the highest graduation rate among the nation's largest school districts, according to a report released June 7th. The annual Diplomas Count Report, published by Education Week, calculated MCPS's graduation rate at 85.7% a 2.6 percentage point increase over last year's report. This is the third year in a row that MCPS has the highest graduation rate among the nation's 50 largest districts. Superintendent Dr. Jerry Weiss discussed the report as part of a rollout event at the Pew Center in Washington, D.C. Dr. Weiss said he was not only proud of the district's graduation rate, but that so many MCPS students go on to success in college and the workplace. We not only get them prepared and graduate, we get them inspired and they go on to higher levels. Last week we put out a report that showed our college graduation rate twice as high as the nation. MCPS's graduation rate is significantly higher than the rate calculated for the state of Maryland, 76.8%, and the nation, 71.7%. Neighboring Fairfax County, Virginia has the second highest graduation rate among the nation's 50 largest districts, and two other Maryland districts, Baltimore County and Anne Arundel County, are in the top six. This good news comes in the middle of graduation season for MCPS. Nearly 10,500 students are expected to receive diplomas as part of the class of 2011. This year's graduates have successfully completed more advanced placement and international baccalaureate classes than any other class before them and they have already earned more than $232 million in college scholarships. 
So thanks, Montgomery County community. Thanks, all the employees of MCPS. Once again, three years in a row, leading the country. This year's data is based on the graduating class of 2008. The full report and listing is available at the Diplomas Count website. Just this past weekend, thousands of people from our area took part in the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure in Washington, D.C. And now the issue of breast cancer has hit close to home as one of Montgomery's council members has announced she has stage one breast cancer. Nancy Florine made that announcement just last month and she wants to get the word out to other women to be proactive in their own health, as we see in this first segment of our new series, A New Chapter. It started as a routine appointment with her physician and in order to follow up with a mammogram, something council member Nancy Florine did on a regular basis. But after she was called back for a second look followed by a biopsy, the number one health worry of women across the nation became a reality for her. When the biopsy came back, uh, the doctor called me. Um, and of course it was a busy budget day and uh, a busy day for me generally. And uh, so I didn't even have time to, to think about it very much. But um, I mentioned it uh, to um, uh, some people and uh, they all told me their stories as well at that point in time. And then I learned what, what a world there is of, of women in this exact situation. It is just unbelievable. It was then she knew she would need the support of family and friends to help her through this new chapter in her life. It just has that kind of wacky, you know, I'm here for you. Her husband David, their three children, and her faithful friend Lady are the core of that network. She says the wide array of medical talent and resources in Montgomery County is comforting. Doctors scheduled a lumpectomy the week after the final vote on the budget, which left little time for anxiety. Luckily, we had the budget. Uh, and, of course, that was uh, uh, a major uh, effort this spring. So it certainly was my primary focus. Uh, and, you know, I steeled myself. I said, I, until I, I really have something to be worried about, I'm just not going to go searching on the Internet. Uh, so I didn't. Councilmember Florine credits early detection for her stage one diagnosis and positive prognosis. She decided to go public with her disease not only because of her status as a public figure, but also to encourage women to get their mammograms. I do feel an obligation to, to share things that um, might help other people uh, make decisions that they have been resisting. Um, and I, I hope, you know, getting this word out is encouraging women to have their mammograms. I've talked to a lot of people who don't want to um, deal with this or have put it off, they say, oh, yeah, I know. And they've gone and made appointments. And, uh, you know, it, it's also encouraged people to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And th that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Since going public with her diagnosis, Ms. Florine told us she's been approached by dozens of well-wishers and folks who say her openness has encouraged them to share their stories. It's that deep connection that has her now on the path not only to fight her disease, but to encourage other women to take a proactive role in their health. Next in our series, A New Chapter, we'll follow Councilmember Florine to her first radiation appointment. Montgomery County Women's Cancer Control Program provides breast and cervical screenings to eligible women through vouchers for free mammograms, clinical breast exams, and pap tests for cervical cancer. To find out if you are eligible, call 240-777-1750 and in Spanish, 240-777-4549. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. I'm in Potomac at Rockville's water treatment plant. I'll tell you why when County Report This Week continues. The abuse of our elderly can come in many forms, emotional, physical, sexual, financial, and through neglect. These types of abuses might go undetected, so knowing the warning signs and educating the community is the best way to prevent this from happening to someone you know. Educate yourself by being a part of the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, June 15th at the Asbury Methodist Village in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Call this number for more information. And remember, sometimes the only visible sign of abuse are the tears.
You can never know which pull safety step will save a life. Until it does. No matter how safe you feel, adding multiple safety steps can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit poolsafely.gov. Welcome back to County Report this week. We're joined now by Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police, who's here to tell us about the role the police department will be playing in the U.S. Open next week. Captain, tell us about it. Well, Susan, during the week of Monday, June 13th through Sunday, June 19th, the U.S. Open will be played at Congressional Country Club in Potomac. During that time, there'll be 300 law enforcement officers from federal, state, and other local agencies assisting Montgomery County Police in the security and traffic issues surrounding the country club. There will also be uh, two satellite parking areas where patrons will have to park in order to get to the event. One is in the fairgrounds in Gaithersburg. The other location is Dulles Airport for folks coming from the south. The USGA has approximately 300 shuttle buses that will be operating from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day to get the patrons to and from safely. There is also a list I've seen that tells us what you can and cannot bring into the tournament, and some of those things folks might be a little bit surprised. Can you tell us about a few of those? The list is extensive. It includes personal electronics, such as cell phones and cameras. The USGA is also banning any outside food or drink, so we're asking everyone who is attending to please leave those items at home or in their cars because there will be a screening process before everybody gets on each shuttle bus. This process will go faster if everybody complies. Okay, I hope everything goes sm smoothly for you all out there. If you want more information on those shuttle buses and to see that list of what you can and cannot bring into the tournament, visit USGA.org. Recently, Rockville has gained national prestige for its water treatment plant upgrade. The EPA awarded Rockville the Sustainable Public Health Protection Award for its innovation in upgrading the Rockville water treatment plant and for its continued leadership through the state. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has the details. Bridget? That's right. The EPA, along with the Maryland Department of the Environment, came to the city's water treatment plant to congratulate Rockville on a job well done. The city was recognized for making sustainable upgrades to the 51-year-old Rockville Water Treatment Plant, upgrades that Secretary of Maryland Department of the Environment Bob Summer says goes a long way. Well, we're here to give an award to the city of Rockville for the great work that they did in upgrading their water treatment plant to conserve energy, uh, save money, uh, create green jobs, and uh, basically improve this facility for future uh, citizens of Rockville to enjoy clean, safe drinking water. The treatment plant improvements were financed in part by EPA Recovery Act funds. Of the $26.83 million given to the Maryland Department of the Environment to fund drinking water projects, $1.7 million was awarded to Rockville, while the city funded the remaining $2 million to complete the project. Improvements to the Rockville water treatment plan included installing motion sensors to control power usage, restoring service pumps, retrofitting the entire air conditioning system, and enhancing the plant's capacity to do water solids by 40 percent. Because of the improvements to the water system, the EPA places Rockville at the top of the list as one of the greenest cities in the state. Rockville's up, up there. You know, um, there's a lot of innovative uh, towns uh, throughout the region and even throughout the, uh, the state of Maryland, but uh, Rockville certainly uh, rivals any of those out there. Oh, this is delightful. I'll tell you, every time the city is recognized for being out in front, especially on environmental issues, you've got to feel proud. Well, it's a wonderful day for Rockville, and I think it just goes to, uh, to prove the fact that we really do take our, um, require our responsibility to our citizens um, very seriously. The upgrades will place the city on the right track for years to come. That uh, We're dedicated to making our infrastructure, bringing it up to date, and making sure it's uh, reliable and sustainable, I guess is the big word, making sure that it's ready to meet the challenges, not just today, but well into the future. And that's a bit of what was going on right here today with this award. For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Breuer. Still to come on County Report This Week, 
Stay tuned because we will bring you a story that might help you the next time you go to buy a new car and an event that brings talented high school students from this region together to compete in a computer programming competition. We'll be right back. AFI Discovery Channel Silver Docs Documentary Festival. Seven days, 100 films, June 20th through 26th. Tickets at silverdocs.com. Hey, how would you like to be a TV news reporter? Maybe run a video camera or even learn how to edit? Now you can do it all by being a part of the Montgomery Community Media Summer Backpack Journalism Academy. Join other teams just like you as they hit the streets to get the big story. Applications are now being accepted for this awesome experience. For more information and to apply, visit mymcmedia.org forward slash backpack. You can do it all by being a part of the Summer Backpack Journalism Academy. We can all be energy savers. <laughs> it's easy. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. Make a change and we can really fly. Learn more at energy.gov slash kids. Welcome back. Do you want to buy a used car? Well, if you want a good deal, Montgomery County offers a sale once a month. There's no salespeople to pressure you, there's no hidden costs, and there are some great steals. This used car lot is a little different than most. These cars have been in accidents, seized because of illegal activities, or abandoned on Montgomery County streets. And occasionally they're donated. But this used car lot may be among the most trusted in Montgomery County. It's the vehicle recovery facility operated by Montgomery County Police. And we are going to sell this month's vehicles that the police have seized for numerous reasons and the owners have either been unable to claim the cars or just refused to. The auction is held the fourth Saturday of every month and it draws two to three hundred customers. At 730 you may enter our lot. You go into our main office at the front. You have to have a U.S. any state issued driver's license or identification. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. You're going down, please. The uh, persons inside our office will issue you a bidder number and register you. Okay. You're going to be bidder number 74. Once you have your bidder number, you're allowed between 7.30 and 9 to view the cars that we have available for sale. A bargain. Hunting for a bargain. The cars come as is. No guarantees. No money back. But Sergeant Snow and his officers will do all they can to give customers a fighting chance. We want to make sure that there's nothing illegal in the cars that we're selling. No contraband, no monies, anything else. Make sure it's clean. These are items that we unfortunately typically will recover from vehicles that you are not supposed to have in your vehicle. Make sure you know what you're bidding on. I don't have enough crying towels for everybody if you buy the wrong car. Selling these cars is the work of the auctioneers. 500 down, 25 down, 50. Some hold up their bidding cards. Sold them $2,000. Others give a nod or a wink when getting the auctioneer's attention. The crowd gathered to bid on the hottest car on the lot. The 2009 Honda Accord, uh, I anticipate this to draw quite a bit of interest. This is a no 09 Honda. Make sure you have the money before you bid. <laughs> was the auction started at about $8,000. And then it kept going, kept going. And I kept bidding. And you just keep on going and, and uh, at, at some point they all have have a price in mind and that's when they stop. Sold them to you, 16 2. On this Saturday, 124 cars were sold, raising over $112,000. Put a little bit of money back into the Montgomery County coffers. This is a win for Montgomery County. 
The next generation of computer programmers are eager to prove themselves in Montgomery College's programming competition. Let's have a look at what it takes to compete in the future of technology. Montgomery College has pulled together some of the sharpest young minds again for its annual computer programming competition. Area high schools have been invited to compete with each other in the field of computer science by programming solutions within the allotted time. This is the largest group we've ever had. We've got 35 teams competing uh, from about maybe 9 or 10 schools. Um, it began in Montgomery County Schools, but now we've expanded. And I noticed this morning that we have teams from Charles County competing. The teams are given um, problems, and they have a limited amount of time where they uh, uh, work the problems, developing a uh, program for it, and then they will be judged in a little bit, and winners will be announced. This competition not only gives these students bragging rights back at their schools, but also helps to hone their skills and prepares them for future opportunities. This is a culminating activity from all of our teachers who really helped us learn the programming language and that's why we could succeed today. It means an opportunity to support young uh, people interested in technology uh, and, and kind of giving them a rough idea of where it's going to go in the future and why it's important to them that they learn certain skills. This is intellectually challenging, it's worth uh, pursuing, it's interesting work. Uh, and it has some value to the world because we are helping people make the world better by using technology. That's really what, what learning Java or any other kind of technology is about. Montgomery Community of Media's Think Green visited the Green IT Summit, an event that brings together leaders from the private and public sectors to transform the ideas around sustainable information technology. The factories of the Industrial Revolution got us into a big mess by burning coal and releasing carbon pollution into the atmosphere. Now, the factories of the Technology Revolution have the ability to make use of better energy choices like solar, wind, and thermal energy. Whether you're at work or at home, computers have become a vital part of our daily lives. But many of us have developed computer habits that are continually damaging our environment while costing us a lot of money. With me is Stephanie Dorsey, the director of the Green IT Economic Summit, to explain how this summit is giving insight to solutions. Welcome to the show. So can you tell me what is happening here at this summit? Well, today we're at the Green IT Summit. We are looking at ways of making a more environmentally friendly computer and technology within the IT departments of large corporations and the federal government. Why is it important for major companies and the government to develop greener IT habits? It's important because we all know that there is not a finite resource. And we have to take care of the resources that we have. And in order to do that, we have to make a partnership. We all have to go into it together. If one side does it and the other side doesn't, then all we're really doing is negating the work that we've already done. What can people do at home to actually help? Well, one of the greatest things that people can do at home is to simply buy a power cord and plug things such as your cell phone charger, maybe a DVD player, your TV, electronics that you may turn off during the day and not use, but they continue to draw energy. Those electronics are called vampire electronics because they continuously suck electricity into them even though they're not using it. And this is something everyone can do across the board. Everyone can do it. Just buy a nice little power strip, plug your cell phone charger into it, and turn off that power strip when you're done. As we continue to address global environmental challenges, it's nice to know there are people developing innovative technologies and business solutions that are tying together the interests of financial savings with the needs of the environment. For more information about this summit, log on to greeniteconomicsummit.org. Up next on County Report, Kathy Stanhope will be here with one of man's best friends who is looking for a place to call home. And advice on moving your plants from the confines of your home to the great outdoors. Keep it here on County Report This Week. We're Open is the catchphrase for a new marketing campaign that's been launched by the county to attract visitors and generate revenue during the 2011 U.S. Open. With the goal of pumping money into the local economy, the campaign promotes the use of a discount card for restaurants, hotels, and other businesses. 
This will help us to drive businesses and to make certain that people understand that we are in fact open and that you can get discounts throughout the county. You can register to receive that discount card at visitmontgomery.com. Serving your community is a great feeling. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center can connect you to hundreds of volunteer opportunities available throughout the area. Are you a student, senior, professional, community group, or business looking to serve? Simply visit our website to select what's right for you and help celebrate the 25th anniversary of Community Service Day by taking part in our Pledge 25 Challenge. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center. Make an impact in your community. Where will you serve? In our Pet of the Week segment this week, we have a four-legged fellow named Buster who could be yours. Here's Kathy Stanhope. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope at the Montgomery County Humane Society with your Pet of the Week, and I'm here with Buster. He is a wonderful guy. He was given up by his previous owners when they, couldn't, they didn't have any time for him anymore, but he's an eight-year-old Andalusian shepherd mixed with maybe a Labrador or maybe some German shepherd in there. He's just a sweetheart. He hates being here in the cage. He wants to go home with somebody who will walk him. He walks beautifully on the leash. If you're looking for a little exercise and you want a reason to get out, this is the dog for you. He would even run well. He'd be a great running partner. He would make sure you got lots of exercise, wouldn't you? Yes. I just met him. He's an absolute sweetheart. He loves everybody. He's so wonderfully housebroken, too. He does not go in his cage. He has to be walked. He can hold it for hours, which is a terrible thing to have, to have him do, but he's just a really nice guy. Right, Buster? He would love to go home with you, so come on down and meet Buster or another dog just like him. He's a wonderful dog. He's in the prime of his life. He's so desperate to go home with a family to love, and he really is a great guy. Look at that face, right, Buster? He just met me a few minutes ago, and he's already my best friend. So visit Buster at Montgomery Humane Society, or see him on the web at mchumane.org, or give us a call at 240-773-5967. However you do it, come down and meet Buster, or another dog just like him. He's a wonderful guy, and he wants to go home with you. You might meet your best friend if you come and meet Buster. Right, guy? In this week's segment from our friends at Brookside Gardens, we get some tips on moving those plants that we moved in for the winter back outdoors. Hi, I'm Kathy Stevens and I'm the Conservatory Manager at Brookside Gardens and I'm here to give you a few tips about how to make the transition for your house plants from inside the house to outside the house where they can really enjoy the summer weather. You really want to wait until night temperatures are at least 55 on a regular basis before you start to move your tender tropicals outside for good. You also have to remember that your house plants that have been inside have been in a lot of shade all winter long and you can't just throw them outside into the full sun. Cells will die and the plant's going to have to grow new leaves. So it's really a good idea when you first move your plants outside that you put them in a partially shaded or mostly shaded place under a tree or under a deck or in the shade of your house for the first couple of days you want them to get some sun but just not for more than an hour or two at a time well that does it for county report this week i'm susan kennedy thanks for tuning in How will your story continue? If you started college but never finished, then MC can help you achieve your goal. Explore your options at one of the open house events on the Rockville or Germantown campus and meet with representatives from admissions, financial aid, counseling, and more. Register your child today for one of the over 200 full and half day MC summer youth programs offered by Workforce Development. Students in grades K through 12 can learn new skills, improve their knowledge, and have fun at the same time in the wide variety of classes offered on all three MC campuses. And Montgomery College Television has won five Communicator Awards of Distinction. 
The Communicator Awards is the top international awards program and honors creative excellence for communications professionals. For more information about the endless possibilities of your community college, visit our website.